Let me just set this up because we've been having a lot of conversations on the show about not just symbols, not just rhetoric, actionable items, and you have one. So let me describe this. You're joining us now on behalf of the McClendon Minority Leadership Initiative. This is a national program funded by predominantly college basketball coaches to create postgraduate internship opportunities for minorities in athletic departments. I applaud you on this, taking the steps, garnering the troops to do this. You said recently that your success is based on, quote, African-American families trusting me with their child. What does this initiative mean to you? My hope is 10 years from now, and it's not just me. This is, I knew this would have to be 50, 100 coaches and eventually 200 coaches. But for me personally, Tommy Amaker organizing with me with this, I hope people look back on my career and say that's the biggest thing he's done. Forget about national titles. Forget about what he's done within College Basketball Hall of Fame. This has changed what the landscape in college athletics looks like. It's changed diversity on college campuses. That's the big picture. Coach, I appreciate you being on the show. And Molly and, and Swagoo, just for y'all purposes, Coach knows this. John McClendon is who this initiative is named after. He was a mentor to my late great coach Clarence Big House Gaines at Winston Salem State. He learned the game of basketball under the, the the creator, the founder of basketball, James Naismith, coached at Tennessee State. This man was the first African American coach, collegiate basketball, one of the first African American coaches in pro basketball, the inventor of the fast break. That's how fast special break. this man was. Jo John Calipari, tell me. Talk to me about what the uh, what the motivation is behind this, because a lot of people are hearing coaches. They don't realize this is really about getting more coaches to also and more people involved in basketball to become athletic directors from the minority community. Can you talk about the agenda yeah, for this yeah, initiative yeah. overall? Yeah, this this is not about creating basketball coaching positions. This these may not right. be athletes. They may be leaders. We're trying to develop the next wave of leaders and decision makers in athletics. And so, you know, we're looking at this saying, how do we get candidates that understand postgraduates that want to get in to athletics and want to be the next athletic director, want to be the next um, uh, decision making to hire more minority coaches? And so we're saying our avenue is this. Coaches are the point of the funding. We're going to mentor uh, these young people. They're going to be mentored within athletic department. Um, but this is a, a project that's going to take time. The coaches involved have committed to four years. We need data in four years to say what's working. Let's look at this. And then we go from there and we keep making adjustments. Coach, I've had an opportunity to, to come around, be around your practices, and I know your players not only have a tremendous um, amount of respect, they consider you family. Uh, talking to you and a lot of those guys, you can see it. It permeates through, through the gym and, and being able to sit on the sideline and watch a practice. I understood that personally. My question to you is, what have these conversations been like with your African-American players in this time? What have you possibly learned? What ha have there been hard conversations, tears? What, what have these been like for you this time with you and your players? Well, there's two pieces of this, Marcus. What, what I can tell you after sitting back for a couple weeks and just listening and trying to learn and, and somebody like me who I feel that, you know, maybe I get this. You know what you figure out? I really don't understand, and I may never understand, but I stand with you. Anything I've done, including this initiative where we've organized this with other coaches, I've run it by my team. Do you think this is something I should be doing for the bigger picture? Uh, any statement I'm about to make or made, how do you feel about me saying this? Because I'm representing those players. And I'll say it again, the success that I've had, my family, anything that's happened for me, my children, their grandchildren, it's because African-American families have entrusted me with their child. 
That's it, bottom line, and I understand that. And that's why, for me, uh, this initiative, go to minorityleaders.org. If you're a candidate, if you're a coach that wants to be involved, if you're a business, because what I believe this is going to mushroom into is businesses are going to get involved with us, and they're going to want to look at these student-athletes or these these future leaders or decision makers, and it's going to be filter into business. So I would tell anyone, if there's anyone that wants to partner with we coaches, because we're not trying to tell athletic directors, create more positions. We need money. We're saying we're going to give you the money. We need you to create positions and mentors. We're going to stay involved and stay active. We need to change what athletic departments look like what ADs look like, so that I sit in a room and I don't see one minority coach or two. It's crazy. And I've known it, and and here's my one regret. Stephen A., you've known me a long time. My regret, why didn't I do this 10 years ago? Did I not have the courage to do it? Did I not see there was a problem? Was I tone deaf to all this? But let me say this. By bringing this to the forefront, every coach that's here heard this said, I'm in because this is needed right now. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.